Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Josh and Jason Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast Show. I am your host, Josh Monday. If you don't know me, I'm a Christian rapper, devoted husband, father, and army veteran. And I'd like to introduce you to my co-host. He's a Christian, devoted husband, and father. What's up, my brother? How's it going? Good morning. Good morning. How's it going, Josh? And um, how's it going, Pierre? I'm doing uh, well. Never met you before. My brother speaks <laughs> highly of you. So, yes. So, it's guys, pleasure to meet you. Guys, uh, this is our hundredth episode. Okay, guys, and I think it's very special because um, the guests that I have, we both attended basic training together, and you know, he, do we, we, at first we were beefing because. We were both having a very tough time being, you know, I was uh, 28 when I went in and, and Pierre was a, a little older himself and we were both uh, having to get, uh, you know, basically uh, demolished by all these people younger than us, these drill sergeants. And, and, um, but dude, we ended up getting along. He helped me through the whole process. We were laughing all the time. Uh, we would always say something like, uh, like the rock would say, like, what's your name? He'd be like, it doesn't matter what your name is. It was just amazing, man. We had the best time. So let me give a, a quick bio of Pierre first before I, uh, you know, and I'll introduce uh, everything about him. So he is uh, Apostle Pierre received uh, the call for ministry in 1995. He attended several theological schools and biblical schools and graduated from them in 1999. Apostle was ordained. Then, uh, as a prophet by his spiritual father, he continues to serve the Lord and rule or modern churches in different roles. Outreach minister, musician, usher, armor bearer, assistant pastor, youth counselor, deliverance team member. Uh, deliverance team member seems like uh, that's good because that's going to help us with the spiritual warfare we're going to go over. Uh, audio visual technician, pastor, and or whatever else he found to do in the church season after season. He was taught in various conditions, men, women, youth, and children about the principles of the Christian life and the preaching of the cross as per 1 Corinthians 1.18. Uh, Apostle Pierre married uh, Akisa Aka and was blessed with three beautiful children, two older boys and one girl who served with him in the USA since 2009. Um, relocated to Florida in 2016, the couple continued to serve the Lord, called chosen, trained, and powerfully anointed by the Lord to serve him. Apostle, the apostle was dedicated his life to fully for the service of the Lord. He has a powerful testimony behind him and he continues to learn to walk in obedience to the purpose and instruction of the Lord. In June, 2022, while seeking the face of the Lord, while seeking the face of the Lord. And after some trials, the Lord confirmed his word to the couple build my church back for I am with you. Uh, Haga uh, one with a new vision and a fresh anointed F I R E. Um, the couple accepted the call and is determined to follow step-by-step -step instruction of the Lord. F-I-R-E will represent the place for glorious manifestation of the Lord and the power of God for humanity. Apostle Pierre and his wife, this time we are committed for you, Lord. For us, uh, for now, the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. His church is called Fire Foundation International Reho Booth. Pierre Logan, how you doing, my brother? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for having me here. No problem. Yeah, so Pierre is an Army veteran, uh, just like myself. Like I said, we went to basic training together. He has a wonderful um, – uh, that was probably the, the longest I've ever read on a bio, but it's all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I got four things, and I'm a – Father, you know, we got four things. Jason's got the three list and then I don't Pierre. even got I don't even, I don't, I, I don't even got that. I was, I was like <laughs> here we are. We have our host, Jason our co host Jason. <laughs> <laughs> He's just chilling in the corner. No, yeah. no, no, no. Jason is uh definitely a uh uh you know breaks down the Bible well and does a good job on the show. And this is the hundredth episode, so guys. Make sure you guys share this. We're guys. super excited. We're going to go over spiritual warfare, 100? guys. 100? 100, bro. That's crazy, dude. That's crazy. It's amazing. Wow. So oh, God. I'm going to yeah. go over a quick intro like I always do to kind of lead us into this. So um, there's this gentleman that I just came across on Instagram. Uh, he's going to be on the show, I think, in uh, January. Uh, look up DRJAMZ1 on Instagram. He had some great stuff. 
I'm going, this is his research and not mine, but I'm going to just say what he says because this is going to get us right into it. So he says, well, and God says, okay, the world calls it freedom and God calls it disobedience. The world calls it abortion. God calls it murder. The world calls it fortune telling. Well, God calls it witchcraft. The world calls it attraction. God calls it lust. The world calls it an affair. God calls it adultery. The world calls it LGBT. God calls it sin. The world calls it censorship. Well, God calls it persecution. The world calls it yoga and God calls it demonic. So the world calls it something that is, this, this part is me. So the world calls it something that's more pleasing to the ear. Why God calls it for what it truly is. Okay. The truth. So, so um, God's word is true and every man is a liar. Okay. So uh, Satan doesn't want you to know right now, whether you're a man or a woman, he doesn't want you to know what you're up from down okay uh it's it's just crazy uh what's what's happening right now he's basically trying to play 5d chess why all these baby christians are, are drinking milk and they're still playing checkers okay guys so the only way to get on the same level uh, and be able to beat these principalities is by coming to jesus being born again and do in repenting and doing an about face okay guys and then also following the following verses that we're going to go over for me the best definition of spiritual warfare, uh, all put into a verse, is going to be Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 20. If you guys want to turn there, okay? We're going to do that, and then I'm going to have Pierre go through some stuff, and I'm going to go through stuff with Jason as well, okay? So, Ephesians 6, 10, for, uh, 10 through 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God, that, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherever you take onto the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, therefore having your loins. Okay, guys, this is going to be what you need to have on and be ready and equipped for this, this, this spiritual battle or spiritual warfare. Okay. So um, it says having your loins girt about with truth. So that's like the belt holding everything together. The truth. Now, what is the truth? Well, the truth is God's word. It says that like God be true. Every man, a liar. John 17, 17 says that God's word is truth. Okay. Uh, also uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Okay. So this is having the, and, and all these conspiracy theories, like I said, you're chasing the truth at all times, right? Well, the truth is, is, is everything we're going over right here, okay? So, and then having the breastplate of righteousness. So righteousness is uh, having integrity, doing the right thing at all times, having, uh, you know, Jesus on your mind. Every every thought that you have is is, is all uh, is all righteous, right? It's not, it's not all, all uh, evil, okay? And it also says to have the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. This is, uh, yes, you want to be spreading the gospel, but you need to have the gospel. Um, you need to have the gospel memorized. You need to have, uh, uh, you know, be able to present it in the proper way, right? And and have it in your heart. That's what that's what's most important. And above all, taking the shield of faith. Now, the shield used to be the, the Roman armors used to uh, the, the Roman army back then used to have like a two by four foot shield. OK, so, you know, your faith comes by hearing the word of God. So you need to make sure that you are reading the Bible, be, be prepared. And, and, and as you're reading and you're because when you read, that's that's as you read, that's 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 hearing the word of God because your mind is telling you. Right. So as you read, your faith is going to be stronger. Um, and also, you know, obviously, as you're praying and you get a better relationship with God, your, your faith is going to. So you don't want to have this little baby uh, shield to block all these fiery darts. OK, you want to have a massive shield. So you got to get deep into your word. OK, so and um, and then we have uh, we have the. Be able to quench. OK, so it says the shield of faith to be able to quench the fiery darts from the wicked. OK, basically from the wicked one, from the devil. OK, the fiery darts from the devil and also from his demons. OK, um, so 
and, and take the helmet of salvation. Salvation is what Jesus Christ did for you. Uh, when you're saved and you're born again, you put on this helmet to protect your mind because your mind is where, where they're going to attack you most, right? That's going to attack you most. So you need to have the spirit of salvation. I mean, the, the uh, helmet of salvation. And then the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, okay? The sword of the spirit is the word of God. So that's your offensive weapon is going to be the word of God. And your also offensive weapon is going to be praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, okay? So um, that is just, I think it's spiritual warfare in a nutshell. What offensive weapons do you use? Defensive weapons do you use? Um, I'm going to give it over to Pierre to, to kind of start this. And I have some examples of how Jesus used uh, these weapons and against uh, Satan himself. But um, go ahead, Pierre, if you like want to get into it. Yes. Um, well, it was a beautiful introduction uh, about spiritual warfare. I mean, I will not have presented better. Uh, uh, I, I would like to thank you guys for having me here. Uh, I'm a so spoken person, so you tell me if you can't hear me well, um, but I will take the heat in a minute. Uh, <laughs> no yes, and, I can hear you uh, perfect, brother, and yeah. I, 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 and I welcome I, you to the show. <laughs> thank you. I would like also to um, reiterate that English is not my first language yes. because I was born and raised in Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire, so I speak French mm -hmm. as a first language. Mm. So if for any reason you can't hear well what I'm saying, just ask me to repeat and I will do so no because problem. I tend to Franklish sometimes. I want you to say one thing. I want you to say, what's your name? It doesn't matter what your name is. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Go Later. ahead, bro. So, <laughs> uh, when, when, when we talk about spiritual warfare, this is a, a vast world. This is uh, a something so big because uh, he, he outlined our walk in Christ. So talking about it in a show, uh, he, he won't he won't be uh, the whole thing. It will be partial. We we'll, would we'll touch some stuff in the show, but there's more to it. That's the reason why uh, God allowed me to prepare a book for it. And mm -hmm. um, by the grace of God, we'll try to make that book coming out in 2023. The book has been written since uh, 2020, mm -hmm. just before COVID. And because of COVID, we didn't release it. And then yeah. so many things happen. But I'm, I'm very encouraged to release that book and, and make people understand what's going on. So first of all, you have to understand something, the why, the who, the where, the when. Why we're having spiritual warfare? You, I mean, you, you, you send people to Iraq, they have to understand why they are going to fight mm. those people there. I yeah. mean, you, you find yourself in the middle of a war or you find yourself in the middle of the battle and you don't even understand why you have to fight. Mm -hmm. I mean, since Christ has paid all, uh, all, the price for us to be free why we still have to fight if christ already did what he was supposed to do for us to be free why are we still in bondage and why are we still doing things for that and this can be explained when you read john um john um john 16 if i if I, john 19 um talking about uh Jesus and Lazarus. Mm. You see that when he was coming to, to Lazarus with his disciple, Lazarus, his friend, was already dead. But when Jesus prayed the Father and he released him from the tomb, the Bible said that he still asked the disciple to go and remove his bondage that was on him. That means that the word of God can make you free, can make you come out of wherever you were, but you still have some people or somebody who has to remove the bondage that are around you for you to be completely free. So freedom, it's, it's hearing the word of God coming out, but then you have to be released from everything that is on you. Mm. You know, we have pastors, we have Christians that are divorcing, who are uh, in some kind of bondage, spiritual warfare every day. Mm. And you feel like, 
hey, those people are supposed to be leading by example. Those people are supposed to be the one that are, are showing us how to live for God. But why are they so afflicted? And you have to understand that sometimes you can have the best the best relationship with God. You can have uh, this ministry successful and all, but if you haven't been released from the bondage that you have around you, those things will follow you along. Mm. And they would show up at a time that you don't expect it because the devil never tried to splash in private, he liked to splash in the open. He liked to splash in public. He liked to demonstrate that he's in charge and he's in control. Mm. And that's where we have to understand that spiritual warfare. And as I say that, I say that often spiritual warfare, there is two things about spiritual warfare. The first one is spiritual awareness. That means that spiritual you awareness. Spiritual awareness. Okay. Because you have to understand your surrounding. You have to understand what's going on. You have to understand, oh, this thing, I need I need to take a, a closer look. I need to pray for it. Yeah. So that's the spiritual awareness. And then second, there is a deliverance part. Mm -hmm. Now, deliverance seems like a big word, but in reality, it's not that big because there is many levels of deliverance. There is self-deliverance. There is, there is deliverance administered by somebody that knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And there is deliverance from the Lord directly that you are just sitting there and the Lord deliver you from something. But I like to say that deliverance has to be seen as all change. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me make myself clear a little bit here. So when you buy a car, used or new, it doesn't matter. At a one point, you have to do your oil change. Why? Because if you don't do the oil change, the engine will not perform the way it's supposed to. So imagine somebody that bought a used car or a new car and haven't done the, the oil change for five years. Mm -hmm. What happened? The engine the goes engine out. The engine will break down. <laughs> yeah. But then you will feel like, hey, I bought this nice car. Why do I have to change all? Because it's a part of the system, it's a part of the maintenance. And children of God refuse to do maintenance. Children of God refuse to do all change. They refuse to understand that at one point I have to check myself or check myself in somewhere for somebody to pray for me, or I have to pray for myself to say, hey, if I have done this, if I have done that, there is probably something bigger than me that was behind and need to be teared down. Yes. That's what we call deliverance because we apply those things to us. But then when we talk about spiritual awareness, we have to understand that from the start, we we're all, not always in battle. We we're not always in a fight. Mm -hmm. From the start, uh, when you read the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, uh, the first verse and the second, the Bible say, at the beginning, God created earth and heaven. Uh -huh. But then, oh, second verse, he said, uh, the, uh, the, um, the earth was not formed and void. Yeah. There were problems. There was something that was not perfect anymore because something happened. So to understand what happened, you have to read. It's a show, it's recorded, so people can go and read the, the verse. I don't have to cite them, wow. but you can go to Revelation chapter 7. Um, sorry, to Revelation chapter 12, wow. 7 to 12, and you will see that the Bible said that there were a war in heaven mm -hmm. between Michael and the devil. And then uh, God decided that devil and whoever was coming with him has to be thrown down on earth. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, uh, the curse was on earth. But then if the curse was on earth, why God later on created the man from the ground, from the dust, from the earth? Why God didn't create the man from heaven? Why he didn't create him from his substance? Why he created him from the ground while the devil was already there waiting for us? There is a lesson to understand here. Mm -hmm. So God created the man, uh, Genesis chapter two, from the ground, 
form him, but he put in him his breath. Mm. Amen. In Latin, they say teo nutus. That means the breath of God, the spirit of God, the word of God was put in the man. And when God put that breath in him, the man became a living soul. So whatever was exterior to the life of the man was just the dust, was just the ground, was just the earth. But what was essential for the man to be excellent, to be to be to be to have dominion was the word of God putting in him. That's what make him alive. So and that's what make the man very dangerous. And before I give you, because I see that you want to say something, but before you say that, I want to say that sometime, and I would say most of the time, we like to say that men coming from the apes, uh, men are just animal that uh, became uh, became oh, human being that we are right now. Uh, we we'll talk about the evolution, we we'll talk about Darwin and all of that, but think about it for a minute. Every single animal on earth has a defense mechanism, as a protection mechanism for him to survive the heat, the cold, and all of that. Mm -hmm. They defend themselves against all enemies. They can defend themselves. Either they run fast, either they have some some stuff to protect them, either it's the, the, the way they present themselves, they have something. But what did the man as, as an animal, what does he have? Nothing. Mm. Wow. So technically, when you look at it, it's like God has created the man without defense, without a protection mechanism. That's why you realize that all animals are scared of the man because the man was not maybe created with a defense mechanism or a protection mechanism, but the man has something that the animals never had. What the man has is the word of God, is the power of creativity, the power of creation. So we don't have anything to defend ourselves, but a lion coming against me, I take an AK-47 and I shoot him down. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't, he's, he's, I, don't, I, I, him, I don't have the power to fight against him, but yeah. I have the creativity to create something to fight against them. And yeah. that's what the man has that all the animals don't have. And that's the reason why it's an assault to say that men are coming from apes. Yes. I, I love it. Yeah. And also, uh, I just wanted to reiterate what you said. You guys got to understand something. We're made in God's image, right? So what does it say in first Colossians 15 talking about Jesus? Okay. Now God, the father is an invisible God. Okay. But listen to what it says about Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation for by, uh, I'm sorry, as I'm reading, something pops up on my phone. Uh, for by him, all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible. Okay, guys, you got to understand that part where whether thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created through him and for him. Okay, guys, that's talking about in the very beginning what Pierre was going over. So if we're made in God's image, it says Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Okay, you guys got to understand that. And we're talking about principalities, thrones, dominions, all was created, all right? It says all in heaven and on earth by through Jesus Christ. All things were created through him, by him, and he is before all things and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is in the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and in all things he may have the preeminence, right? You guys got to understand that. So all the principalities, all the stuff we're talking about, this evil, this warfare, we're, oh man, this is scary. This is not scary. You know why? Because we don't need to fear the one that could kill the body. We need to fear the one that could throw the soul into the fire, which is God. Okay, guys. So now he created all this stuff. He created all this. 
but I just thought it was interesting when you were talking about, and when he breathed that into him, that's breathing the Holy spirit into him. That's, that's, that's what literally what it means, right? Breathing, yes. breathing God's spirit yes. into the man and yeah. everything Pierre was going over, man. I just love it. I'm just like, this is, this is awesome. And we've gone over evolution on our show, guys. We showed you that it's a, it's called the theory of evolution. It's called the big bang theory. All oh. that you guys got to understand. We've already gone over I don't want to beat it like a dead horse into everybody, but I just thought I wanted to bring that verse up. So you guys understand that all these things are created, you know, by, by, by God. So we're, we're okay. You know, we're, we're with the, the winner. Okay. He wins in the end. We're with the winner already. Okay. So just want to let you guys know. People, but people would ask, well, why don't we just go to the end then? Why, why are we going through all this? And why do we have spiritual warfare? In my opinion is that when man, Yes, man is, is Adam is, was created after God's image. Yes, Adam was a direct creation of God, but man is not. Man is created in Adam's image now because we have the defect of sin. So when we go on that, I think that when, when that happened, <clears throat> yes, Adam experienced divine, the divine viewpoint. He knew God existed. We don't know that anymore. We have to have the faith. We have, we're rewarded by faith, rewarded by we are rewarded by faith and then it comes our works. And then, you know, then we are judged by, by, by that. But I feel like when, like when Job and, and in the book of Job and spiritual warfare, they say, it's a great example of why the innocent suffer, but I feel like it's, 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 he has to experience the divine viewpoint. That's your, that's your walk. That's when you read the Bible, you get closer to God. You have a relationship with him and, spiritual warfare is to experience the divine viewpoint whatever you're going to go through you understand the spiritual world is the real world this is not the real world this is not this this what you touch what you see out there what you feel yes you you do have it it's it's your 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 molecular structure colliding with another molecular, molecular structure but seriously at the base of it the spiritual world is the real world and people have to understand that that's what's going on that's what controls everything going on Yes. All of it. And if you don't understand that, that's why you have to, you, you go through these things because you have to understand the divine viewpoint. When yeah. things get taken, when you have all this stuff, when you're at the top of your game, that's when the devil will attack you. Not when you're low and he will come at you when you are at the top of your game. And if you're not prepared, you, your spiritual walk and your spiritual warfare is you're going to be easily, easily yeah. just whacked up by, by the devil. And you're, and you're not going to know what to do at all. But when you do have the, divine viewpoint and you do have a testimony and you do you have those things and you lost them or you you experience hurt and you experience a, a, a lost one anything you have to understand that it's it's going to be if 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 you are a believer it's going to be given back to you and, twofold and, you know and let's do this if you never had a bad day in your life you know you're never going to know what a good day really is so you're going to be tested, put through trials and tribulations. You're going to be put through the fire. And especially when you become closest to God, the devil's, no, please, I want him back. You know what I mean? That's that's what he wants. He wants he wants to own that real estate again on you. So now, guys. Uh, before this, before you say yes. before you say that, let me give some, some context to whatever you guys were saying. Because uh, having the knowledge that I have, and listening what you guys are saying, I'm amazed because I'm like, how oh, how oh, they they come they came to that conclusion? While me, I have to study it, you know. <laughs> and and I want you to understand that you are so in the right, but there is a contest behind it. So when God created a man, He created He talked about Adam, correct? Yeah. And when he created Adam, he created him in the way where because of him being citizen, citizen of earth and citizen of, he was citizen of earth before citizen because of, earth. Okay. of his formation, yeah. but he was also citizen of heaven because of the breath of God in him. Mm. You have to understand that at the beginning, the man has dual citizenship, but then when the woman was created from him and then the serpent came and saw them, Genesis chapter three, he saw them in the garden. Uh, the, the garden of Eden 
it's a place in between heaven and earth. It's not heaven, but it's not earth. Why I say that? Because the man could see God coming and talking with him. He was not hearing God on only. He was seeing God. That means that it was a spiritual place. But the Bible didn't say that God was staying there. The Bible said that God was coming. Yeah. So that means that God was residing somewhere else. But then the serpent had access to that place too. That's why I, I'm, I firmly believe that this place was a place of transition where he can use his dual citizenship. And when they commit sin, the sin that they commit was disobedience from the order that God gave them. And because of that, the God cursed them. Genesis chapter 3, 15 to 17. Mm -hmm. He cursed them. He told them, this is what will happen to you. The devil will start to eat from the dust. And at one point, his descendants will be... Um, uh, the descendants of the woman will be yeah. coming uh, against the descendants of the serpent and she will uh, bruise his head and him will bruise a heel. That means that that's where the fight starts. Mm. In the, the chess garden. match. The heavenly yeah, chess that's match. That's where the yeah. fight starts. And that's where the man lost all the privilege that he used to have to see things in the spiritual realm. Mm. That's why we got kicked out. Mm. So I join you when you say that uh, the world that we are living is not the real one, the real one, the spiritual, because everything happened in the spiritual before it come down on the natural. Everything that will happen to you has already happened in the spiritual, mm. but Amen. people don't know that and they don't know where it come from. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why Jesus came to revert our position, our initial position from kicked out of the garden for us to re-enter into the garden of Eden. We are not in heaven yet, but living on earth, we can still have a dual citizenship again. But the mm -hmm. only way for you to have a dual citizenship is in John chapter 1, verse 12. That say, for all those who received him, that mean the word. Mm -hmm. He gave them the power to, to be become. sons of God. Yeah, sons of God. The power to become. So that power is <clears throat> reinstating us in our citizenship. Mm. So you can have your citizenship back when you believe in God again. So mm. you're living on earth, but you are truly citizen of heaven. So the things that you do are different of the people who only have citizenship of earth. So you see things in a little different. So I want to give you guys some context here. That's all. Oh, man. That's a beautiful way to explain it. And guys, uh, we can move right into understanding uh, Job, I think, is the best example in the Bible of uh, spiritual warfare, okay? First of all, we need to understand when you're walking with God, when you have that dual citizenship like uh, Pierre was talking about, Satan has to go up to heaven and ask God for permission for him to be able to do what he's about to do right here. Notice that, okay? It says, Job 1, 6 through 11. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan was also among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come from? So Satan answered to the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth on it. Uh, this is going to be the new King James on the King James. It says in the earth and on the earth. So, you know, that's, that gets really interesting. Then the mm -hmm. Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And there is none like him on the earth. A blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil. So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household and all around that he has on every side, you have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and you will surely curse you to your face. All right. So the devil's going up telling God that you've blessed this man greatly. Uh, you put a hedge around him. You've protected him. Take the hedge down and let me let me uh, uh, start tempting him and let me let me start putting him through trials and tribulation. Let's see if he does curse you. Let's let's find out what he went through. 
All right. This is just a list. Okay. I'm not going to read every verse because it's, it's, a, but this is going to be, um, well, it, it, but th- th- they don't understand too that the, he, Job is, it, it understands the divine viewpoint. He does. hundred mm-hmm. percent. He's, he's he walking with it. God. He, he's walking he with the has Lord. a personal relationship with the most high. Okay. So yeah. some people don't have that. You know, some people don't have that, that, that personal relationship. So that's, that's, this is why you go through your trials and tribulations because God is smacking you upside the head going, come on, dude, you're going to, ex- you're going to have to, ex- and, and, and when you are the, if, if he's trying to con, cause you don't seek God, God seeks you. Okay. Your only job is sinning. That's all you do. <laughs> yeah, your job is over right there. Your job is complete. <laughs> And he's gonna he's gonna keep calling you, and, and if he keeps calling you, keeps calling you, keeps calling you, you're not, you're not paying attention. It's it's gonna get it's gonna get it's gonna, it's gonna get to the point where now you already made your choice. Now you go that way or you go this way. There is no middle road. You can't be hanging on the fence. You can't be Switzerland. You can't be Switzerland on this issue. Man. Neutral. Yeah. yeah. So, so you have to be all in or nothing. So when you go through these the job the job uh, viewpoint, yes. Innocent people suffer, and the, this is the the to understand it, your walk with the relationship with God. It's like if you have a friend and he he never calls you, and never wants to hang out with you, and never says anything. And then one day he calls you for help. Are you gonna help him? Yes, you, you know you will, but you're not gonna be. It's not gonna feel that good. But if if, if he's always contacting you, always calling, uh, being around you, always always giving you his prayers are that you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to help that guy a lot more because that's how God looks at it. You're going to, you're calling upon him all the time and talking to him every day when you're going to work and driving everywhere, when you're, when you're, when you're, you know, at home with you in your marriage, everything is always has God involved in it. Your spiritual warfare will be a lot easier to deal with. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah just, sorry, dude. I didn't mean to interrupt. The, I just wanted to. It's okay. You're, you're yes. doing great, bro. And, and, it's, and it's, it goes along with everything. Yeah. You're, you you got to have that that uh that shield of faith right and you gotta and you gotta have that double-edged sword which is the word of god so listen guys here's the afflictions that job went through uh job 1 13 through 19 describes messengers coming to job and telling him these things have happened okay first the sabians took job's oxen and donkeys, killing his servants who were with them that's the first affliction second fire from heaven burned up job's sheep and his servants who were with them third the chaldeans took job's camels killing his servants and all who were with them. Number four, a great wind killed all of Job's children by mm-hmm. causing the collapse of his oldest son's house where they had been eating and drinking together. Job 2, 1, 20, uh, 22 describes Job's distress and his blessings instead of uh, cursing God. So Job is still not cursing God. I mean, don't get me wrong. Just like a normal person, he is complaining, okay? Like when he's talking to his friends, he is he's not cursing God, but he's going through so much. Job uh, 2 verses 1 through 6 describes God's pointing out to Satan that Job still uh, holds his integrity. So uh, now Satan responds by telling God, well, uh, you know, let me uh, let me afflict his body. Okay, let me put him through pain, suffering. So now you know that Satan can cause diseases uh, and and stuff like that. There's demonic uh, behind some of these diseases that people have. Right. So we got Job 2 verses 7 through 10 describes uh, Satan uh, afflicting him with sores from head to toe. And Job's wife never gets touched. Why is that? Well, some people would say that that she never gets touched because she's telling him to, to curse God. He, she's like there like a coach. Curse him, curse him, curse him. But also you got to understand, when God marries a man and woman, they become one, right? So when they become one, then now, now he can't curse. He can't kill the woman because they are one. Right. So you got to understand that. So God still kept his Mary. You're going to be one. So when he says not to touch Job, he can't touch the wife either. OK, uh, th- that's why that's why sometimes I, I, I believe that if you're married to a non-believer and you are a believer, your faith color covers your wife because you are if you're that's why it might not. It's it's hard to 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 go through that. that that's another spiritual warfare you go through. But I feel like. If you if you are a, a strong believer and, and I think I feel like your faith will cover your wife and she will be saved. I think she will be saved just because of you. Uh, I feel I, I do believe that and 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 and, and she she has to get her own walk on. But I feel like you know that 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 that's that's why too. That's 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 a good point that you just made right now because you are one. Your flesh is one, and that's and you yeah. cover you cover flesh that. is one. 
Yep, your flesh is one. But yeah, I, I think afflictions are going on with him. They're going on with her. I think, uh, Logan, you, uh, yeah, you're muted right there. Okay, uh, go go ahead, Logan, if you want to uh, talk about Job and and just the powerful yeah, stuff um, that happened there. Job is an example of uh, having some kind of spiritual awareness. Just know that everything is coming at you, but you don't have to curse God. You don't have to curse nobody. You just have to understand the lesson at hand. Mm. Now, how many times we can honestly look at the situation coming at us and see the end of God in it? Not many times. So it's like the army. Mm. Everything you do in training, everything you do in pity, it's to help you. Mm-hmm. PT is physical develop. training, guys. Just yeah. so they know. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that you do is to create some kind of muscle memory so that your body will be prepared for anything that will happen to him. But the children of God don't like preparation. Mm. The children of God don't like training. They don't yes. like to train the mind. They don't like to train the body. They just feel like all they need to do is to watch some shows, be on TikTok, be on Twitter, be on Facebook. That's how they train their mind. But that's how the devil trying to distract you also. He's trying to take your training away from you by creating distraction. He tell you, oh, it's too cold out there. You don't need to train. Oh, it's too hot out there. You know, you don't need to train. Oh, you can train tomorrow. Oh, it's like going to the gym. Same thing. Yes. You will find any excuse in a book to not train well. But the truth is, when you train your mind, when things happen to you, I don't guarantee you that you'll be able to survive it. But at least you have that reflex to pose your whole life and ask, what's going on? That's the spiritual awareness there. And be- before that spiritual awareness, Oh. Before you do any kind of act of faith or deliverance, you need to have this spiritual awareness to be able to stop and say, God, what is happening? Yeah. Not, not just blast the whole world, but just trying to understand what is happening with me, what is happening in my family. And mm. people don't know this, but let me tell you something. In terms of deliverance, we, we learn by the Bible that a curse that happened to you, Jason or Joshua, uh, it can go until the fourth generation. Mm. Now, Generational curse, yeah. Yes. Now, let me explain your generation. The first generation before you is your mom and dad. The second generation is the parent of your dad and the parent of your mom. The third generation are the parent of the parent of the parent of your dad and the parent of the parent of your mom and the parent of the parent of the the other side and so on and so forth until the fourth generation. So any of them committing a sin, committing something will affect you right now. If you don't get delivered from it, you see some people would develop some kind of anger and they create some classes for them, for them to manage anger, to manage their frustration. But the truth is there's a spirit laying there that need to be kicked out because it's coming from a generational curse. Or some people married and have divorced already three times while they are good people, but it seems like they don't have luck in marriage. It's not about luck. It's about spiritual awareness. You have to understand that there is a spirit that doesn't want you to be happy. You have to kick him out and Mm. so on and so forth. So when Job experienced what he was experiencing, he went through a lot, but at no point he cursed God. His wife was pushing him because she didn't understand what was going on. And that's that's the reason why it doesn't matter what you do, where you are, what kind of job you're doing. 
If you want to be successful in life, you have to surround yourself by people that know where you are going, not people who understand where you are. Mm. You, you don't choose the people yeah. because of where you are today. Because those people, you're about to leave them because you're about to enter the next phase of your life. You need to find yourself. You need to surround yourself with people who can understand where you are going. Mm. That's the kind of people, that's the kind of friend that will help you go through any kind of trial and tribulation. Will you be because... my friend? What you say? <laughs> I say we... <laughs> I will said, we, we be my friend? No. <laughs> oh, I am your friend. <laughs> That's, That's, a, that is, that, 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 That's a great point. Point. great point, bro. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he does bring a good point. He does, he does bring a good point with, with that. I love it, man. If you think about it, the devil also was using his wife to, to you understand, the, the devil could be could be using your anything in, in, in yep. this situation to to make you. to Make you uh, make it worse. Yeah, make it worse and blast, and, and blast God for it. You know, and, 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 and if you, if you're doing that, then he's, 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 he, and you're not ready for that. You know, like you say, you don't sit, you don't take a step back and think like, Hey, you know what, what is really God? What am I doing? What, what, what am I needing to learn right now? What is, That's what am question. I lacking? Yeah. What, you know, do I, do, yes. what is going on? Because if you don't, you might just lash out or be angry, or you might say something, you might do something that will yeah make it even a lot more worse. And, and if you're not using the, the the tools like like Josh was saying in Ephesians, you know the helmet of salvation, the stuff like like because it's all out there: television, politics. Uh, yeah. Who's uh, controlling your mind? Social media, everything. Mark Zuckerberg, Fox Eleven News, CBS, CNN, Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. pornography, right. magazines, secular music. Uh, it's everything is a battle for your but mind. But even now, religion, e even religion, all that stuff. Yes, that's it, true. It, it could be used strongholds. To 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 disinform disinf disinform the the, oh, the believer, but you have to understand it when you're reading the Bible and you're doing that. The Holy Spirit anticipated this stuff. That's why it's a spiritual thing. That's why it's cool to understand that when you read the Bible, every situation that you've ever been put in your life with sin is in there to help you to 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 go through it to help you get past it. If you tear a page out the Bible, what did you lose? Nothing, because the message is spread so far throughout the Bible. That's mm -hmm. what he wants. You have to understand the divine viewpoint. That's what it is. His mm -hmm. divine viewpoint is in the Bible. And if you don't start, if you just take one message or one chapter out of the Bible, like I'm going to build a, I'm going to build a faith just off that. You can't do that because mm -hmm. you're not getting the full counsel of God. You're not getting the full message. Mm -hmm. And when Job, uh, uh, Isaiah, Elijah, all these, and, and through the Bible, they've gone through the things. But they do understand the divine viewpoint that this is not real. That that even when Joe Job's kids died, he understood that he was he, they're gonna be in heaven. He's gonna they're be physical. Blessed. Yeah. Yes, true, they're, they're gonna be there. So mm -hmm. the, I don't that well, I, I came with nothing, I'm leaving with nothing. Mm. But they're gonna God made promises to you, you know what I'm saying? And, and if you understand the divine viewpoint of what he gets across to you those promises are made to you not jew gentile alike look, don't matter at, who you are look at abraham okay that's a perfect example of true faith he knows that god promised him through isaac that he was gonna he knew god promised him but he was gonna sacrifice him anyways because he trusted the lord like jason he knew the spiritual the divine viewpoint he knew because he, he walked with god but we're look so far David, away from god but david commits yeah. a huge sin and God takes his child from him. But at that time, he's on the ground during the, when the child's still alive and he's praying, praying, praying. But right when that child dies, what does he do? Hops up, let's go eat. Let's, 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 let's. He wasn't sad. I, I could do nothing more there but do, pray and, and fast. But once I found out, he already stands of divine viewpoint. God, God he mm. told him, hey, you mess, when, when you mess around with sin, little bit, goes into the bigger parts it's decay you're going to decay yourself something will happen god death. tells you you yeah. will be punished for it whether it's here or there mm -hmm. and yes. you're going to learn your lesson especially if you're if you're already a believer oh especially yeah especially if you already know you get you he's not going to just going to smack your hand he's going to he's going to show you hey you are not the one in control here dude mm -hmm. so 
I think it's great. Proverbs 16:32 is it, it bounces off what uh Pierre was saying. It says, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He that ruleth his spirit than that the than the one that taketh the city. So my interpretation is he who ruleth the mind is greater than he that could taketh the city. So uh it's a it's definitely a battle for your mind. And we we're talking about who's controlling your mind. There's a at this point. There's a long list of stuff that could be controlling your mind uh, when they came out with the television, the programming, you know, there's so much stuff that, that's, that's, that's meant, you know, football, uh, Super Bowl, all the, they know exactly when events are going on. So they can put ad after ad after ad yes. of drinking, causing it, what it is, is causing everybody to stumble. Pornography is a, a big one because it separates you from God. Uh, you know, like I said, secular music, you're sitting there listening. It causes, I know, cause I'm a, I'm a rap artist. So back in the day when I would listen to a certain song, it would cause me to be more aggressive. It's it would cause idol. me to want to smoke it's an weed. idol, dude. Yeah. And, and then when you're at concerts, what are you doing? You're putting your hands up and you're praising that person. So there's a demon behind a lot of this stuff. Up. But I just have to let you know that there are, if you have two dogs, okay, one is the flesh, one is the spirit. Uh, which one are you feeding? Is your flesh this massive pit bull that every time the spirit speaks, it's and it, your spirit's like a little chihuahua, or is your spirit the pit bull and your flesh is the chihuahua? That's what you got to understand. When you're going through life, you got to understand which one are you feeding? Are you feeding this, this, the flesh all the time? Are, are you always feeding the flesh? And then your spirit's just sitting there like, hey, what about me? What about me? That That's that's when you have very difficulty having discipline because your flesh is always, shut up, spirit, shut up. And your spirit, no problem, because it's a little chihuahua. And then your flesh is this big pit bull. If you start feeding your spirit, your, your spirit starts getting bigger. That's when you start walking with God. And instead of just saying, I believe in Jesus, now you're actually walking with Jesus, just like Job, just like... Um, uh, you know, Joseph or certain people's in the Bible that was actually walking with God. Noah, uh, uh, you would say um, Enoch. It says that he was walking with God. That's when you're walking with the Lord instead of just saying, hey, I'm a believer. Hey, that's all good. Hey, good thing you're believing, but that's just the starting point. Now you need to start walking with God, read the word of God, but also live the word of God. When you start doing that, I'm not saying I'm perfect at all. But I'm noticing that these these all these strongholds that Pierre was talking about in our family, man, I have one side that was meth, uh, meth addicts, uh, molestation, pornography on one side. The other side, I have schizophrenia, all these different things. So generational curses are coming down. Now I got this one body and Jason has this body. We're both part of the same uh, DNA. But is it affecting us? Yes. I had problems with pornography before. I had problems with drugs back in the day before I, you know, joined the military and got all this discipline before God used me as a vessel. I had problems with cocaine, uh, women, uh, uh, you know, lusting after women, all these problems. Why? Because what Pierre was talking about, generational curses. And as you become a believer, born again, you start to see and dissect why this is happening to you. And you don't, and you let the past, you can never change ever. But like Pierre was talking about, it's where you're going to go. Born and, again. Yeah. That's the point. Your heart has to be changed. You have to have that change of heart. You have to, that's, a, that, that's a good point. That is Pierre, the, Pierre t- take over, man. I know, I, I know you have some, man, you're, 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 you're definitely, you're shaking my spirit. You're making me uh, shaking and baking with the Lord right now. I love it. Well, we don't, okay. have, we don't have much, we don't have much time to say a lot of things. Yeah, we have like another 15, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. It's okay. okay. Go ahead. But one thing I want to give as a gift for our audience is my gift for the Android episode. I want to talk to you for a minute about the Antichrist. Did you already heard that name? Of course. Okay. So many people think that is a person. And I thought that it was a person that was supposed to come. That was supposed to be the beast and lead the rebellion of the devil for him. But I was surprised. Uh, It was four years ago when God sent me into a revelation and he helped me see in a spiritual world. That's something I will talk about some one day. And and I was asking him a question because, hey, you have the opportunity. You have to ask. And... I, I, I ask him, can you show me who will be the Antichrist? Who will be the beast? Can you show me so that I will know? Because I have a cr- curious mind. Mm-hmm. And he didn't say anything to me. So I was like, 
I remember something is that for you to have the correct answer, you need to write, ask the right question. Hmm. If you ask the wrong question, you have the wrong answer because you, you won't create the answer that you are looking for because you're asking the wrong question. So I didn't say anything. And when I wake up, I woke up from that vision. I was like, why didn't it respond to me? I mean, it could have shown me something, tell me something. Mm-hmm. And the spirit of the Lord in me was telling me, who do you think the Antichrist is? And I'm like, I don't know. That's why I'm asking the question. <laughs> He's saying, this is something that will unite, that will do globalization, mm. mondialization, that will do, that will put the world together, that will make everybody become one. Mm. That is something that the devil has always trying to do, make sure that he control the narrative of everything that is happening on earth. Uh, being here today, but know about something that is in India or in Australia or in Africa, you know from here, you don't have to, I mean, news travel fast, but with news traveling fast, with knowledge traveling fast now, there's what, there's connection between individual. There is mm-hmm. game that are created to create uh, some user that can talk to each other. We learned that Facebook, uh, Twitter, and all those big, big social media stars have been very instrumental in some countries for political reason. Yeah, for influence. Yeah, influence. So uh, when the Lord was starting to talk to me like that by the Holy Spirit, I realized that the Antichrist is somebody that you already know, but you never knew that it was it. Was it. Mm. You know what it, who it is? Or what it is? It's nope. the internet. The internet. Yeah. Huh? That's it. Well, it's kind of like, like in Babylon when, 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 when they were, when they all had That's one it. language and they could you create anything. You got There's it. Nothing man cannot learn now. So we must, yes. we must break that apart now because internet is powerful and dangerous. Yes, because mm. it's information information if i could i could go on and sanction and control yep it's dangerous so it came out of cern it came out of cern as well guys and we've done an episode on cern so the world wide web came out of cern so you guys gotta understand something um Mm. that cern is they're messing around with a lot of um i would say spiritual things they're trying to uh yeah they they understand that it's a spiritual battle they understand that there is this side and that quantum physics is all about that. Mm-hmm. The smaller you get, the 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 the, the splitting of a splitting and the splitting and the splitting of the split. There's a far there's a place where there is no more splitting. There is yeah. no more mm-hmm. mathematics. There is no. It's all stops. Wow. Yes, like at to a point. If you think about it, your body at a molecular structure isn't solid. This your your body the, the your car to a molecular structure molecular structure isn't all the it's a di- it's a digital simulation <laughs> and God is the director uh, watching over you making sure everything is going his way and it and the devil's a creation your creation that's what he that's what the devil tricks people into thinking that he is the one that created he is the one that creates no. God created him, so therefore he is a tool. Even even the devil likes it or not, he's still performing God's will no matter what he does. And he still, like he says, he has to go ask permission to go and bother Job. And and but Mm -hmm. if you you really stand tight, the devil's not. That's why you said the internet's everywhere and try to be everywhere. The devil's not everywhere. No, he's not. He can't be. So if you if you resist his temptations or resist him, he will flee. Mm, yep. Amen. And and that's that's the that that's the thing that people don't get. That's the why do the innocents suffer? Because they get the, the when they do understand the divine viewpoint and when they get the testimony, and after a while, you the devil you'll start to unrecognize it before it even happens. Oh, whoa. Spiritual awareness. Yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this, oh man. I just saw Playboy magazine in the bathroom. 
what do I do now? Do, do I go home and, 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 and wreck the rest of my life? And you start to see your, your life and going down that path. You're like, I, I don't want to do that. And that's all going on in your mind. And people don't even know that yes. <laughs> every day you're doing that. You're, you're, you're making these decisions to not do that, not do this, but it's yeah. when that decision where you just go and you go and you go. And then sin started, sin started way over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything is being uh, being written down in a something called a book of life. You, there's mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, you have a fork in the road, you could go which way you're going to go. And every, every decision you're making, I believe is written in the book of life. So, you know, you know exactly where you went wrong. But, you know, you could you could take a knife and you could uh, use it to uh, carve something or you could use a knife to eat food, you know, or you could use a knife to go kill somebody. You know what I'm saying? Or you could use a knife as a tool. There's like four different ways you could go with that knife. You know, if you're using it for good, just by eating your meat or whatever, that's different. But there's 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 different routes you could choose in life. And you guys can understand that God gave us free will. So you want to talk about people suffering. Well, you know, a lot of people are suffering because of what the little routes that you chose to go each time you have this fork in the road to go. You know, you have different routes to go. And God gives us that free will. Thank God we have that free will. We're not robots. We can't if, if a robot told you, I love you, I love you, you're not going to believe it. Because it's it's programmed to say that, but we are not programmed to love God. We are mm. programmed. We're, we're we're basically just able to do, love God if we want to love God, or or separated from God. But when you go to hell, Jason was talking about that friend that only calls you once in a while. That that means you don't want that friend around, obviously, because you're not calling on him. So what happens is when you go to hell, you're going to be separated from God. There's no more calling God and God anymore. Now you're separated from God for good. And if on earth you wanted to be like that then when you're going to be eternally like that. So we got to understand it's real serious what we're living here. The spiritual warfare, that's why that's why Jesus says let it be done in heaven as it's done on earth. He's talking about it happens in heaven before it, let your will be done in heaven as it is on earth. That's why Peter was talking about it's happening in heaven and the spiritual. And and like he said spiritual awareness is vastly important. If you don't have spiritual awareness you don't know when it's the flesh or if it, when it's an actual demon. Because mm-hmm. a, a, now a, a Christian, born again, can't be possessed. But a born again Christian can be oppressed. A demon can oppress you with depression, anxiety, all these different things. And a psychologist can only go so far. What they do is they just take you to pharmakia, which is uh, which is in the Bible and Revelation. Find out what pharmakia is. But God is going to take you to what Pierre was talking about, deliverance. Because there's a demon behind all this stuff, homosexuality. There's a demon behind uh, depression, anxiety, mental illness, everything you're going through. Like he said, there's a demon right here and there's an angel here and they're fighting like crazy trying to get you, you know, your mind. God is just, it's a tug of war between God and the devil. Every decision that you make, and I'm telling you, there's forks in the road. You can go evil, evil, or you can go semi-evil, or you can go a little bit evil, or you can go all good, all truth, all God, you know, and it's, it's just, it's a, it's a chess match for you. And then there's a chess match going on between the devil and God. And it started in Genesis three fifteen, or it started when, when the devil left, uh, you know, heaven, I don't know when that happened. And it doesn't, the Bible doesn't say exactly when that happened, but I mm-hmm. think the chess match started when God sent him down to the earth. And, and, and that's, I believe when that started, but, but yeah. Genesis three fifteen, that's when the chess match started between uh, the devil and Jesus now, because he's talking about uh, it's going to come through the yep. seed, right? So, you know, what did, what did Paul say? Every idol has a demon behind it. And a demon or an idol is not just a statue that you worship. An idol is not just on the television that that's the, that, that you watch American Idol, stuff like that. An idol is anything that separates you from God, anything that keeps you from him, that you devote your time, money, anything towards. And it's and and then you know it separates you from him because you don't include him with that. You include him with your daily your daily drive to work. You include him with your Bible study. You include him with your prayers at dinner. But mm-hmm. do you include him with your what you're doing on behind closed doors when, when no one's paying attention to you? Mm-hmm. No, that's when that's your idol and that's your demon. That's your that's your problem. That, that that people understand that they think, oh, it's just a, it's, someone worships the Dalai Lama. That's just, that's that that's that's the that's what Paul's talking about. No, meth, alcohol could be your your idol because you turn to it before you turn to anything else. And look what it it, it's, it it shows how social decay in our in our in our country is where it's going. 
It's mm. it says in the Bible, it, it prophesies the Old Testament. It says the nations will be will be basically prideful like Sodom, you know, going after these type of strange fleshes, doing these type of things that are against totally against God, letting the children run the nations, letting the nations be run by other things than what God structurally made it. Why the man's supposed to be running the household. That's why in, in Job, when, when his wife is bickering at him, Job's like, be quiet. You don't run this. You don't run this household. So be quiet. I am the spiritual leader of this house. And what I say is that I'm going to pray. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stick to it. And God's going to show, you know, he's going to, he's going to bless me again because all this stuff is not real. Yeah, at the end of Job, away. he gets blessed. Yeah. Yes, uh, you know, he he's, so. he knows because God promises these things. And, and that's and that's the thing. God's not gonna everyone always says God will never give you what you can't handle. Yes, he will. He's gonna give you everything that you can't handle because he's gonna see what that breaking point is on you. And you, when you break and you finally hit your rock bottom, whatever it is, you're gonna see, hey, even Samson had to do it. A lot of people in the Bible, they go through it. And these these people are godly people. And he still breaks them down to the to the to the just to the gritty of that person to really understand. Hey, it was never you; it's always me. Mm -hmm. Understand that, and we're cool. Mm -hmm. You don't understand that, you're gonna have problems. You have a lot of problems every day, all day, every day. Mm -hmm. I still, I, I, I'm not even saying that I'm good at what I at at at, at beating sin every day. Like that I can't no, even. No. I, I, it's so hard Nobody's. with everything <laughs> and, and the condonement of it, I feel forward. so horrible about it and I yeah. can't, all I can do is talk about it and spread a message and hope to God that this is the best, that, that, you know, that, that this is actually my purpose and I'm supposed to do this, praying that this is this, I'm spreading it right. And mm -hmm. hopefully that people are hearing it and are getting saved and are understanding that, that they need to understand the divine viewpoint because I don't understand it fully yet. I just started learning that after josh wanted to do this subject yeah all right amen all right so we're at an hour and 15 i think this is this is uh an excellent show uh yeah, i just want to i want to end with my my part would be uh and i'll have uh pierre do his ending words and then jason as well so my part would be matthew 4 versus uh you could go 1 through 11 i'll end with this so then jesus led up to this uh led up of the spirit unto the wilderness to be tempted of the devil now, and when he fasted 40 days and hold on, ma'am, I think he's um, tripping. Okay. It says he fasted 40 days. He was afterward and hungered. Okay. So what's that? What's happening here? The devil is attacking him when he's at his weakest moment. Okay. He's getting attacked at his weakest moment. The devil's waiting like a lion ready to pounce or his demons. Okay. It's not the devil can't be everywhere, but he's got demons all over the place. Right. So anyways, and the tempter came to him and he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But Jesus answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. <laughs> then the devil. OK, so the devil. OK, he used the word of God, which is which is the sword against the devil. Now, Jesus. He, OK, Jesus came from heaven. He already know his faith shield is probably bigger than the whole entire uh, world. Okay. Because his shield of faith is going to be massive. So he's using now the offensive weapon here, the word of God. Okay. And now Satan leaves him alone. He backs off. Then Satan comes back. Then the devil take him, take him up to the holy city and set up on the pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down for it is written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands, they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou doest thy feet against the stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taken them up to exceeding high mountain. So now the devil let, left him alone. He used the word of God, the offensive weapon, the double-edged sword. Now the devil take him up to an exceeding high mountain and show, show him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory to them and saith unto him, all these things I will give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus saith to him, Get thee hence, Satan. It is written, Thou shalt not worship that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came to him ministering unto him. 
So he's at his weakest point. He fasted for 40 days. You guys got to understand, he's at this point where, you know, I get home from work sometimes after a long week and I'm tired and, 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 and I start feeling a little angered or, you know, anxiety. You can imagine the way Jesus is feeling at this time. But what does he do? He gathers his thoughts. He uses the word of God against him. And it shows you the perfect balance of what you need to do when the devil comes and tempts you. And this is Satan himself presenting himself to Jesus. So, and he knows that he's the son of God, but he's just trying to tempt and tempt and tempt. So it's just really interesting. I'm going to leave you guys with that. The way Jesus, he used the word of God against him. The devil backed off. Then he came back for another, backed off, came back for another. So you might be dealing with that. And your spiritual awareness is going to know when you're dealing with that. If you, you know, like Pierre was talking about, right? So I just leave you with that. Jesus used the word of God against Satan. And, uh, and I think it's a beautiful uh, transition into uh, kind of ending the show. So you guys know, because obviously we need to follow uh, Jesus. He gave us a blueprint to follow. We need to follow that. So, all right, Pierre, go ahead, man. Give us the ending words you'd like to give us. And yes. And, we'll uh, and uh, first of all, thank you for having me on the platform. I know it's very early to you guys and you guys made it happen. And congratulations on okay. your 100 episode. Uh, two things I would like to, to say before we finish uh, here. Uh, the first thing is that I want you to understand that when we talk about spiritual warfare, it's not to make you afraid of the devil. Mm -mm. I want you to understand that. We are not building a culture of fear. You don't have to be afraid of the devil. You have to know who is your opponent, who is your enemy, and know how to fight against him. That has nothing to do with fear. So uh, there's tools that we have. Uh, Joshua talked about it in Ephesians chapter 6, 12 to 18. There is all the spiritual weapon that you need to have daily for you to be able to fight against the things of the devil. And second, I want you to understand that it's the end of the year. It's December. So in December, uh, there is what we call, we, we didn't have a chance to really talk about it, about principalities and domination and spiritual weakness and all of that. But I want you to understand that they have some sacrifice they have to make for the end of the year to prepare for the new year. Uh -huh. It's a tradition. In, in the Satanist world, in the devil worshiper world, they have to make some sacrifice. The only people who don't make sacrifice to start the year is the children of God. Uh -huh. You need to sacrifice of your time. You need to sacrifice of uh, before you plan any vacation, before you try to see what you will eat for Christmas, what you will have for the end of the year, all those gifts. The first gift that you have to give to yourself is to take a moment with God to assess what the year has been and what you want 2023 to be. You have to assess. You have to look at it with some spiritual eyes and say, God, I don't see everything but I can see through your eyes. Lead me to the way that I can understand what's next for me. Send me to the people that you need to send me to. Open the door that need to be opened and close the one that I don't need so that I can work efficiently for your kingdom and for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you all. Oh, I love that ending. Yeah, Pierre, that's... you better be on like every week now, okay? <laughs> We're hey, gonna have um, spiritual oh, warfare part two, but yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, Jason. but the, the, like before you go, because Josh, you said uh <laughs> the the devil's like a, a roaring lion, and uh the 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 best the best story I feel like against spiritual warfare that that, that I can give you is the easy story through through Samson. I wish I could say, say, uh you know reiter reiterate more on it, but. If you understand the story, he was he was a Nazarite. He had, he had a Nazarite vow. His parents were told no strong drink, no 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 foods of the vine, nothing like that. And and if you read through it, if you go, the he was he was supposed to be a champion, a champion. He was a champion, like a judge for for God. But the first chance he gets when he's with his parents, you know, he goes he goes into a, to a vineyard. You know, without us, he goes to a place called uh, he goes to a place called uh, Tim Timra or something like that, and uh, and Timra. and he's not even supposed to be near the vineyard, nothing like that. But what's waiting in the vineyard when he gets there? A roaring lion. 
to, to tell you right now, spiritual warfare, if you if you don't put yourself in that situation, when you're already told not to, when God already tells you, he gives you specific rules to, to not to do. But when you're when you're going and doing things where you're not supposed to be doing, mm-hmm. that's that's when you're 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 going to start vulnerable. Getting, that, yeah, very vulnerable. Mm-hmm. In every situation you do, when it's when when you get your hand out of that cookie jar because you're not supposed to be in it in the first place. And if God gives you the, if God gives you, tells you, Hey, this is what's going to happen. If you do it. Yeah. He's warning you. Yeah. And he's warning you (laughs) and he's warning you. And that same lion that he kills, he's got to go back. And that same lion still makes him commit sin after that. When he, when he, when he, on his way back and he, when he eats that out of that honey and he's not supposed to touch dead things. And that's the thing. His, his, his walk through life always brought him to it. And he always fell into it. And that's even a champion of God. So that's yeah. a chance. So think of it. We're not, I'm not, a, we're, I'm very far from that right now. So, <laughs> so if you're a person that's struggling with this stuff, understand even the, even the most, you know, most champion of, of uh, most loved of God fails all the time, constantly. Yes. Mm-hmm. But when you have that divine <laughs> viewpoint of understanding that he will forgive you and he will, and, and he's there for you. You just got to be there for him. You just got to be there for him. You you got to bring him around. Yes. And, and Jason's true. You know, you can make, you can choose to put yourself in that. uh, You know, a lot of people have um, stumbling blocks, you know, in their life that causes them to fall into sin. And you can, you know, you put yourself around if you have a problem with drinking and then your friend asks you, do you want to go to the bar? And you're like, oh, I'm strong in God. I'm going to go to the bar. And then, yeah, obviously you're going to probably end up stumbling. So don't go to the bar, you know? So that's him. You go into the vineyard like Samson. You're putting yourself in a position that you know you're going to probably stumble. So I'll leave with this, James 1, verses 2 through 5. Uh, this is this is what uh, I think Pierre was talking about and what I was ta- what we've been talking about. It says, my brother, my brethren, he's talking to Christians, believers, okay? Or back then it was probably, you know, it was, it was believers, people walking with God. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If anything, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives you all liberally and without reapproach and will be given to him. Okay, so guys, this is, for me, I love this podcast. We're going to have Pierre on for part two so we could break down the principalities of evil and we could break down the witchcraft because December is witchcraft month. Also, Christmas, okay, guys? Uh, Pierre was talking about Christmas. Understand something about Christmas before you you indulge. Okay, Christmas is not Jesus's birthday. Okay, it no, was made for Saturnalia. Okay, it's made for uh, Nimrod's birthday. It's made for Mithra's birthday. They just what they did is they just you know Constantine took Christmas and he and he took all the Roman gods and the Mithras and everybody and he placed Jesus's birthday on December twenty fifth. Understand that, okay? Now celebrate Jesus every single day. Okay. Celebrate Jesus every single day. Okay. Just know that when you're buying that tree, that, that in Jeremiah, it says, don't cut down trees and put silver and gold. So when you're putting that tree and that idol in your house, just know that Jeremiah talks about the heathens doing that. Okay. So just, just understand that it's a spiritual battle in everything you do. Well, there's a spiritual battle in holidays as well. They make Christmas, so you just buy, 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 and give gifts. Anyways, I just want to let you guys know that. But we're going to end this in prayer, all right? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we need protection. And like uh, Pierre was saying, you know, thank you. First of all, Lord, thank you for 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 bringing Pierre back into our lives, uh, back into my life. Uh, what a blessing, Lord. Thank you so much for for keeping Pierre alive all the way through uh, the military that he went through and, and, and keeping me alive through my deployments or whatever Pierre went through. I don't know what deployments he went on or what he went through, but Lord, thank you. Uh, he is obviously a man of God. I, 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 pr- I, I pray in Jesus's name that you protect his ministry. You protect his home. You protect him and his wife and his family. Lord, I would need you to protect me and my family, please, Lord. I had, I, I had, you know what I went through this week, Mo. Uh, I went through, Lord, you know that I, I came to do the spiritual warfare podcast. I, we decided on it. And then all of a sudden my wife's stepdad passes away. So I, and all of a sudden my kids are all 
sick with uh, on breathing treatments because, uh, you know, this week with RSV and all this craziness. OK, so, Lord, I'm going through spiritual warfare right now. Protect my family. Heal my kids. Uh, heal my uh, wife's uh, uh, mom. Please, Lord, heal her. Uh, we're going through spiritual warfare every single day. And, and Lord, we're not scared of the devil. We're fearing you. OK, because I know fear the Lord is what we're supposed to do. But we love you, Lord. We appreciate everything you do. Anybody that has any strongholds, uh, anybody that has any sickness that's listened to this, anybody that has any mental illness, when if it, we rebuke these demons in the name of Jesus, Amen. the mighty name of Jesus, we rebuke these demons, these strongholds, these chains, these drugs, these nicotine, these alcohol, tobacco, pornography, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, fear, uh, anything that, that and, and please, we release these people you know, in, in, in Jesus's name, we release them of these demons and these generational curses and these cycles that people keep going through on a day-to-day -day basis, Lord. We pray that you release these demons. Anybody that's listening right now with a pornography issue, lust, sex, any type of issues, please, Lord, release these demons. Okay, Lord, and we appreciate it. And also anybody that's listening, help them to get in to your word because faith comes by hearing the word of God. We need these people to become faith strong, ready for spiritual battle. So Lord, thank you for this podcast. Thank you for giving us a clear connection. We love you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, Pierre, yeah. thank you so much for coming on everybody that's listening. Okay. Uh, check out uh, your YouTube. Can you shout out your YouTube page for everybody before you, uh, before we go? I don't have it. Andy. Next time. That's okay. Fine. Okay. No problem. Next time. So we're going to have Pierre. Thank on. you, YouTube. Thank you, YouTube for, for, uh, Finally, giving us our subscribers that back because man, we're we're blowing up on those right now. I really appreciate everybody, <laughs> appreciate everybody on YouTube commenting and and doing your thing. I really appreciate. It. Thank you, Pierre, for everything, man, and uh, thank you, Josh, for everything. God bless you, man. This was a great subject. I really needed to hear this stuff, dude, because it, it uh, dude, study Isaiah, bro. Study it, bro. It's a good mm. book, dude. All right, so everybody that's listening, please subscribe. Hit that red uh, subscribe. Hit that uh, bell. Okay. Uh, share this podcast. Everybody that's on Apple, we need some reviews. You know, you guys, I, I've only seen like one review in the last month. You know, we need some reviews. We need you guys to comment on Apple if you can. Spotify, get our ratings up. Only because we don't make any money on this. Okay. Uh, we're, we're just we're just trying to uh, get the, the podcast shared out there so that people can hear this, especially this one. People need to hear this. So thank you guys so much and God bless everybody. And I really appreciate you guys. We love you.